Dr. John Torres here with NBC News. This Facebook Live, we're going to talk about a couple headlines you might have heard over the weekend or today and what those mean for you and as far as the coronavirus going forward here. And then I'm going to answer viewers' questions. So if you have questions, please send them to us. We'll get to as many of those as we can. But first, I want to start off with the news about where we are right now, particularly around the country, and what people are saying about this week and possibly next week. And what they're saying is these are going to be tough weeks. You're hearing words like somber, saddened these types of words, the Surgeon General came out and he said, this is going to be our Pearl Harbor. This is going to be our 9-11 right now in 2020 because this is going to be the worst week so far yet of coronavirus and particularly for deaths in the country. And what we're seeing across the country is this upslope in deaths in certain areas and hot spots cropping up in different areas. New York City yesterday had a number of deaths decline which is a good thing. It's a silver lining, but we're not sure if that's a trend. And so we can't say anything's going on here until we start seeing that day after day after day because this thing can be tricky. It can go down and then go right back up. But even if it is starting to go down, that means that we're at the apex. And people think, experts think, we'll get to the apex this week or possibly next week, at least here in New York City. What that means is we're not out of the woods yet. It simply means that we're at the top of the curve. We still need to come down the backside of the curve. And that means more time with more people getting sick, more people getting hospitalized, more people getting in the intensive care unit, and unfortunately more people dying from coronavirus. And so now's the time, as they said, for us to double down our efforts to do the things we know work. And social distancing is the main thing that we know that works. As a matter of fact, Dr. Bixby, she's the head of the coronavirus task force, yesterday in a conference said, here's what I want everybody to do. Stay indoors this week in particular because this is the crucial week to try and get it under control. By stay indoors, I mean don't go to the grocery store, don't go to the pharmacy unless it's essential you go, but otherwise stay inside because we need one week out of everybody to try and get this under control. And the big deal is it needs to be across the country because if there's certain areas, the hot spots, New York, California, Washington, those areas where we know things are happening, if they're the only areas doing it, the other areas are going to fall behind much like some of these areas did and they're going to be trying to play catch up later on. We don't want that to happen. We want it to quell, we want it to go ahead and calm down across the country like we're seeing in other parts of the world. Italy and Spain are looking like they might be on the backside of that curve. We're hoping they are. Time will tell. China's starting to open more things up right now. They're starting to recover from this. So hopefully we'll keep our fingers crossed that that is what's happening. But again, like they said, this one week, give everybody this one week to stay indoors as much as you can. Only go out for essential things. And if you do go out, social distancing. Please practice that social distancing. And the news over the weekend is now the CDC is recommending masks for people when they go outside. And the main reason is because we know that 25% and possibly 50% of people who don't have symptoms. They're either what we call asymptomatic, they have no symptoms, or they're pre-symptomatic, meaning they're about to start having symptoms, but they feel great right now, could be passing on coronavirus. Those masks are mainly intended to protect other people from somebody passing it on to them that doesn't have symptoms and might not even know it. The CDC did make one change this week to their criteria and their guidance. They said up until now that people coughing and sneezing are passing on coronavirus. They added talking to that as well, because when people talk, You can feel the air coming out about this far. It's not the six feet, but if you're close to them, that virus could certainly travel to you, so you have to be very careful. Of course, when it comes to masks, certain things, wear it when you're out and about. If you're making a mask at home, which is what they're talking about using, homemade masks, not the ones we need to reserve for healthcare workers and frontline workers, but if you're using the ones from home, do a simple test. Look through a light. If you can see through it, then you need to double up that material or get a different material. Other people are saying put fleece between the mask and your face. That'll help thicken it out a little bit because the main thing is you want as much material and as much density there as you can get. When you take your mask off, and here's something we learn in medicine, when you take the mask off, it's important not just to pull the mask off like this and certainly don't pull it down to eat or drink something and put it right back up because you're just spreading that virus around. Instead, what you want to do is grab the mask from behind, pull it forward, and then don't let it touch your face Clean that mask, wash your hands, let that mask dry, and use it the next time. You don't want to go outside with the same mask you were just wearing the second time because when you're putting it on, you could be getting virus on your face. Be very, very careful with that. So that's the news as far as what's going on this week. Again, it's predicted to be a bad week. Let's hope it's not as bad as it's predicted to be, but we need to be ready for that, and we all can do our part to make sure we keep it under control. 
Number two, you might have heard about the lion here in New York City, the Bronx Zoo, who actually tested positive for coronavirus, for COVID-19. What does that mean for us? Well, first, a little bit about what happened here is this lion started having uh, symptoms of coronavirus. I, I believe it's actually a tiger, sorry. Started having symptoms of coronavirus. They went ahead and decided to go ahead and test it. They found out, yes, it does have coronavirus and it did have COVID-19, the symptoms of coronavirus and the disease. But they think they got it from a handler. The thing is, though, they don't think they can pass it on to anybody else, that it's stopping at that point with that animal. Other animals showed similar things. They didn't test the other animals for one very simple, plain reason that they wrote us and told us. The reason they didn't do it is because in order to test one of these animals, they actually have to put them under general anesthesia because you can imagine if they're trying to do a nasal swab, they're trying to draw blood from an animal, the animal cannot be awake. They're not going to like it, and they're not, gonna, and they're going to attack the handler. So they have to be very careful. Putting them under general anesthesia causes issues. So they only did it to that one, and they're presuming the others have it as, as well. Nobody's going to the zoo right now because it's closed. So it's certainly going to give them time to recover before anybody comes near them. But this does beg the question: What does that mean for you and your pets? Well, right now, according to the AVMA, the American Veterinary Medical Association, there's only been four animals, domestic animals around the world that have tested positive for COVID-19. There's been no cases here in the U.S. of dogs or cats testing positive for COVID-19. And what they think is, is even if they did, they couldn't pass it on to us. So a couple of things they're saying. Number one, if you're sick, don't play with your animals. Stay away from them, much like you stay with away from all your family members. Number two, if you go outside with your animal and bring them back inside, wash their paws, wash their leash. If you're playing with them and petting them, wash your hands after you play and pet with them before you touch your face. That way you make sure, and also wash your hands before you play with the animal, before and after, so you don't pass it to them, and they potentially don't have it on their fur passing it to you. It's not going to come from inside their bodies, but it could come from outside their bodies. So those are the two biggest news items right now. The fact that this week's going to be tough, and we know that going in, and uh, this animal that has coronavirus doesn't mean other animals are going to get it, doesn't mean your house pets are going to get it, but there's certain ways we can protect them, and they're protecting us as well. So let me see if we have any questions. How many strains are there? More than one strain of COVID-19, and can you catch it twice? So the question is, how many strains of COVID-19 are they, and can you catch it twice? Well, first and foremost, COVID-19 is not a virus. COVID-19 is the disease. The virus is called SARS-CoV-2, and that's because SARS-CoV original was back in 2002, 2003, the SARS outbreak. So this is SARS-CoV-3, which stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, which is the one we have right now. There's technically one strain of that. That strain has a little bit of changes as they've seen it across the globe, but not big enough changes to consider it having mutated or considering it, ha it being another strain. So they're all acting essentially the same on our body. Now, the confusion comes in because there are hundreds of different strains of coronavirus, but only seven of them affect humans. There's four we know of that cause cold-like symptoms, and those have been around since way before we've been around, and people typically get those throughout the year. If you get a cold, it's either coronavirus or a rhinovirus, a like different kind. So that's four of them. The fifth one is SARS, 2002-2003. The sixth one is MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, which came out later, and then the seventh one is COVID-19. Those are the ones that cause any kind of disease right now. And so, again, there's seven strains that can affect humans, but there's hundreds of strains. And some of those affect animals and don't affect us at all. So, though, and the thing is, if you do get it, sorry, the second part of the question, if you do get it, we think you have, so if you get COVID-19 from SARS-CoV-2, we think you have an immunity to the virus. And that immunity, we're not sure how long that's going to last, but we think it's going to last at least a year, potentially longer, which is important because we feel like this virus is going to become seasonal. It's going to come back in the fall. We need to be ready for it. And if you have antibodies already built up to it because you were exposed to it, then more than likely you're going to be not getting it in the fall. You're going to be protected from it to a certain extent. So. Can you test negative, but your symptoms get worse? So the question is, can you test negative, but then your symptoms get worse? You can test negative, and then all of a sudden, a few days later, your symptoms start getting worse, and then you test positive. When they test you, they have to be able to detect the virus. If the virus is at such low levels, they can't detect it, and it's still building up in your body, it could take a few days to build up to the point where that test is positive. 
and then you start having symptoms. That's why we tell people, if you test positive, we know you have it. If you test negative, that means at this point in time, we're not detecting it, but doesn't mean you don't have it or you're not going to get it. It just means we're not detecting enough virus. And you have to be very, very cautious about that because regardless, if you did test negative, you still want to protect yourself and protect other people from you because there's potential that you have it, don't know it, and could be spreading it. Dr. John, how do, how do you clean those masks that you have? So the best way to clean the masks, if you did homemade masks, more than likely they're either t-shirts or pillowcases or material you have around the house, clean them like you would with the regular cleaning instructions for that type of material. You can throw them in the washer and you can certainly clean them that way. You can clean them in your sink as well. It's the detergent and the warm water that actually affects the virus and kills the virus, particularly the detergent. And then you want to let them hang dry. If you have a dryer and you can put them in a the dryer and turn up the heat a little bit, that can certainly help. But washing them in the detergent in a sink can certainly kill the virus, as can washing them in the washing machine. But the main thing is you want to make sure that you clean them after every use before you put them back on your face. So have multiple ones of these. Today we made some out of t-shirts here in our house, and we're going to be using those as time goes on here because, again, we want to save the N95s and the surgical masks for the front line and the hospital workers desperately need those. I know you've talked about this before, but can you really explain what the difference is between the flu and this COVID-19? So the question I have here is, what's the difference between the flu and COVID-19? I've actually had a lot of people ask me too, like, could I get both at the same time? So number one, to answer that question, could you get both at the same time? It's theoretically possible, but it's very unlikely it's going to happen. That's a rare event that two viruses hit you all of a sudden at the same time. So if you got sick, you tested positive for the flu, assume it was just the flu and not coronavirus because you don't want to think you have an immunity to it when in fact you don't. On top of that, the difference is there are two different viruses. The flu is influenza virus. This is coronavirus. They're two different things. The influenza virus, it mutates every year as it goes around the globe. And so we know every fall when it comes back here, it's going to be a different strain than it was the year before. So even though we still call them H1N1 or H3N2 or whatever we call them at that time on the different strains, it's going to be a different H1N1 than last time. If you look at the subtype types of that, they're different. So it'll be H1N1, a subtype. That subtype changes. With coronavirus, we think that subtype's not going to change. It's going to stay the same as time goes on. There's a vaccine for the flu, which is effective. Again, some people say it looks like it's only 40 to 50% effective. Well, that's, that's the best we have right now, and that's better than not being effective at all. And even if you get it, it'll prevent you from getting the bad effects of the flu and prevent you from getting hospitalized and potentially dying from it. Coronavirus, no vaccine yet, but they're working very hard on it. They think they'll have it within 12 months. So that's probably the biggest difference is the symptoms essentially start off the same. People talk about fevers, fatigue, body aches, those types of things. With coronavirus, it's more respiratory, so you tend to get this dry cough, which they both can have, but then you tend to get these breathing problems that flu typically doesn't have, and the fevers sometimes get even higher. So those are probably the biggest things to look out for. Is ibuprofen worse for you to take than acetaminophen for so, symptoms? So the question is about ibuprofen versus acetaminophen. Ibuprofen is the Advil, the Motrin, those types of medications. The acetaminophen are the Tylenol type medications. There was a story that came out a couple weeks ago about theoretically ibuprofen could make things worse if you get coronavirus, and it has to do with the receptors in your body called ACE receptors, angiotensin converting enzyme receptors, ACE2 receptors. Those receptors are the same ones that ibuprofen uses, and they can actually get those re receptors upgraded so you start getting more of those. And the theory is that if you have more of those receptors, there's more for the coronavirus to latch on to. That's the theory behind it. It's not showing anywhere. Nobody's showing any research that that is actually happening. The World Health Organization came out with a statement saying they looked at the data. They're not giving any, any statement saying that to, you should stop your use of ibuprofen, but they're still looking into it, they said. So at this point, it looks like ibuprofen does not cause any issues. But if you're worried, then simply switch to acetaminophen, the Tylenols for now at least, until we get through all this. More women than men get this, and why is that? So uh, the gender split between people who get it, different age groups that get it, based on their gender, and parts of the country varies. So when we saw China, we saw that it was basically almost even of who got it, but the men got hit harder, and the men ended up dying more from it. And they think part of the reason is because men tend to smoke more in China than women do. The rate for men smoking, especially in the area where it hit them the hardest, 50% or so, women 2%. And that smoking, since this is a respiratory illness, can cause issues with the lungs. 
as far as the rest of the world, a couple of things. It looks like that, number one, men seem to have worse outcomes from it. And splitting it down the middle about who gets it, men and women, it varies back and forth. But men, they think, have worse outcomes around the globe because women have stronger immune systems. And it gets a little scientific, but essentially there are immune genes on the X chromosome. Women have two X chromosomes. Men only have one. They have an X and a Y. So that X chromosome, we think in women, gives them that extra immunity or immune system strength that men don't necessarily have. And so that's why we think it's, it's affecting men more, even though they both might be catching it about the same level. So. The president talked about a new medication that has been used for malaria. Should I ask my doctor to get this for me right away? So the question is about the president talking about this medication. and He's talking about hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine. They're two different medicines. Chloroquine was the original malaria medicine. That was developed in the 30s and started being used in the 40s for malaria, 1940s. And it's been used ever since. It's very successful for malaria. Recently it's been used for autoimmune issues, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis. They're saying now it looks like at least in some very, very small trials that it seems to have helped out with coronavirus. But these are very small trials. Some were done well. Some weren't done quite so well. And they weren't done in controlled trial fashion because it's hard to do at this point. Because controlled trial means that you have somebody who gets it, somebody who doesn't, and you compare the two. That's difficult to do when you're trying to save people's lives. And so it looks like in these trials it might have helped a little bit, especially the hydroxychloroquine, which is the one that has been made recently. It doesn't have nearly the side effects. But the concern is that chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine to some extent effects have this side effect where they can cause cardiac or heart arrhythmias. If you get those heart arrhythmias, they could be fatal. There's also been some talk about combining the hydrochloroquine with azithromycin, an antibiotic. That azithromycin also has a habit of side effect of causing some heart arrhythmias. So the two of them together, both causing heart arrhythmias, can make it even more likely those heart arrhythmias can happen. What I'm trying to say here is that these medicines, even though they might be helpful, also have side effects that could be harmful. So more studies need to be done to make sure, number one, that they're not going to cause more harm than good, and number two, that we know the exact dosing and the exact timing of that dosing to help out coronavirus. Another thing that possibly could happen with medication is if you take medication, it could actually cause you to be more likely to catch the disease, which is kind of a quirk with some of these medicines that we're studying. They need to make sure that doesn't happen because if it does happen, obviously that can make things worse. So they, they're looking at those two things. They should know within a few months whether that's working or not. But up until now, they're using it on an emergency basis for people that are critical, along with another one called remdesivir and some other medications as well, as we're waiting for that vaccine to come, which is probably about 12 months away. And it sounds like that's about the main questions we have right now. So again, kind of going over what happened over this last weekend, the two main things. One... Be ready for this week. You're going to hear bad news about the numbers going up, deaths going up. So just be prepared for it. And as Dr. Fauci said, these things go in phases. First phase is we start getting the cases under control. Second phase is we start getting the hospitalizations under control because cases lead to hospitalizations. The next phase is we start getting the intensive care unit stays under control because hospitalizations lead to that. And then the final stage is we start getting deaths under control. So even though you might hear that cases and hospitalizations and intensive cares are doing better, deaths tend to lag from that. So you might still hear, be hearing about deaths come the next month or so. But this next week is going to be critical. We all need to do our part. Please stay indoors for that time period and make sure we help each other out. Plus, there's that news about the animal they got it at the Bronx Zoo. It shouldn't really impact us at all. It's interesting that they got this. They got it from a human handler, but it doesn't look like they can pass it on. So I think we're both going to be doing okay. The main thing, again, is do your part this week. Stay indoors, social distancing, wear masks when you're out and about, and just take care of each other. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day.